spindle apparatus is a particular structure that is essential for each and every cell which undergoes the division. In case of a dividing cell, spindle apparatus helps to segregate the chromosomes into the daughter cells. Spindle apparatus appears in both of the cells which have centrosomes and which lack of centrosomes. In case of the uh, cells which have the centrosomes, spindle apparatus originate from the centrosomes. But in case of cells which lack centrosomes, those kind of cells needs many more of the proteins which make a particular functional spindle apparatus. And in this video, I am going to discuss about all of the models that describes how a spindle apparatus forms and what is the main proteins that in initiated that is involved in the functional production of spindle apparatus and how it performs. Hello friends, welcome to Biology Concern. I am Animesh. So let us jump into the topic. First thing, what is about the spindle apparatus? Spindle apparatus refers to the cytoskeleton structure of eukaryotic cells that forms during the division of separate sister chromatids between two daughter cells. That means a spindle apparatus is forms with the help of microtubule and kinetochore. Uh, in my previous video, I already discussed about the kinetochore molecular structure uh, in which uh, the, all the necessary proteins that is health, that is uh, essential for the making of kinetochores are descri briefly described in there. But in this video, I am going to discuss this portion of spindle apparatus, making of spindle apparatus or functioning of a particular spindle apparatus. So, the kinetochore and microtubules perform together and makes a functional spindle apparatus that helps the to segregation of those particular chromosomes into two daughter cells. That means, in case of a cell where chromosomes needs to be segregated, either mitosis or meiosis, spindle apparatus uh, is very much essential to segregate each of the pair of sister chromatids into two and in the daughter cells producing a uh, same daughter cells containing the same amount of chromosome in case of mitosis. So, spindle apparatus function plays a crucial role to separate those particular chromosomes into two daughter cells. Next thing, many more multiporting complexes are here present in the formation of spindle apparatus which is essential to making a particular spindle apparatus and they are grouply collect, uh, known as microtubule associated proteins. So, microtubule is one of the major structure that helps to build up a particular spindle apparatus and in the help of alpha and beta tubule in microtubule grows and it ultimately attaches with the each kinetochore and ultimately forms a spindle apparatus. So, in this video, we have to know few of those particular proteins that is the microtubule associated proteins which are very much essential for producing a functional spindle apparatus. First one is the gamma tar. So, gamma tubulin is a specialized tubulin variant that assembles into a ring complex called gamma tar. So, gamma tar is a specialized um, tubulin protein that is a gamma form of tubulin protein and it is a particular variant of a alpha or beta tubulin and it makes a ring complex that ultimately known as the gamma tar. Okay. And which nucleates the polymerization of alpha or beta tubulin heterodimers into the microtubules. That means gamma tar actually facilitates the assembly of the particular microtubules. Next one is the augmin. Augmin acts as conjunction with the gamma tar to nucleate new microtubules of, of existing microtubules. That means, when a particular microtubules is formed from a pre-existing one, in this uh, particular time, augmin comes into play and augmin joins with gamma turk. So, first thing, first of thing, augmin joins with gamma turk and it particularly nucleates a new microtubule and forms a new microtubule which originates from the existing ones. Third one is the CLIP 170. CLIP 170 playing a role in stabilizing class ends of the microtubules. So, when a microtubule grows from the centrosome and it near rapidly uh, reach to the kinetochore, those ends are known as plus ends. Okay. So, in this portion, CLIP 170 comes into play and it ultimately stabilizing those plus ends and possibly 
mediating their direct attachment with the kinetochore. So, clip 170 actually mediates the direct attachment with the kinetochore and it also stabilizing the plus ends of the microtubules. Next one is the CLSP1 and CLSP2. What is that? CLSP1 and CLSP2 are the very end of clip associated proteins. Okay. So, clip and mammals, clip associated proteins like CLSP1 or CLSP2 contribute proper spindle assembly and microtubule dynamics in NFS. So, in case here CLSP1 and CLSP2 are very much essential to perform a spindle assembly or to build a particular spindle assembly complex. Okay. So, CLSP1 and CLSP2 are there in case of the microtubules that are originated from the centrosomes. Here, two of the theories comes out, two of the models comes out. In those particular cells which have centrosomes in there, there is a model came up that is the search and capture model, that is the centrosome mediated search and capture model. And in another cells which is lack of centrosomes, if you uh, observe here, this cell, the, suppose I have to write it down A and this is the B cell. So, in case of A cell, there is clearly presence of centrosome, okay. So, centro, centrioles are there in the inside of the centrosome, but in case of B cells, there is no centrosome present. There is no centrosomes here. So, in case of those cells, in case of those cells which have the centrosomes in there, the search and capture model comes into play. And the cells which are lack of centrosomes, here self-organizing models comes into play. So, in the search and capture model, in 1986, Krishner and Mishon proposed this model. So, this model is proposed by Krishner and Mishon. They defined microtubules undergo rapid growth and cap catastrophe to search the cytoplasm for its or the kind of growth. That means, a send from a microtubule originate from the centrosome and it uh, rapidly grow into the cytoplasm. Okay. And it searching for its uh, kinetochore that means say for example this is a kinetochore so microtubules all of the microtubules rapidly grow into the cytoplasm and they can search for the uh, kinetochore of particular chromosomes when a particular microtubule is uh, capable of searching of each kinetochore they are attached with particular kinetochore molecule or particular kind of kinetochore structure okay next thing Microtubules organizing centers are localized into the cell pole that plays the main function here. Those are or, uh, situated in the poles that means the in centrosomes. So, microtubules are originated from the centrosomes and microtubules search entire cytoplasm for pi kinetochore region and when it is able to find the kinetochore, it ultimately binds with each of the kinetochore and it perform a spindle assembly complex and it produces a spindle assembly complex. But in case of self-organizing model, this model came in 1996 by Hield and his colleagues who proposed the particular model of the self-organizing model for those cells which is lack of centrosomes. So, the cells which lack of centrosomes, okay. So, they propose that microtubules are nucleated asentrosomally near the chromosomes and spontaneously assemble into anti-parallel bundles and adopt spindle-like structure. That means from kinetochore microtubules are originated and it extends towards the pole. So from here microtubules are originated and extends towards the pole and by reaching towards the pole they are joining with each other and forms a particular spindle assembly complex. In here RAN GTP, in here RAN GTP, RAN GTP or RAN GTPase plays a crucial role or important role because two of the main microtubule associated proteins in case of self organizing models that is TPX2 and NUMA that is all known as the microtubule associated proteins usually inactivate or usually inactive when it is bound to important B. That means important B is a protein when NUMA or TPX2 binds with importing B, it actually inactivates whole complex. But in conjunction with RAN GTPS, RAN GTPS helps to separate importing B from TPX2 or NUMA and thereby activating those complexes. 
if we understand those complex mechanisms we have to look into this diagram okay so here a structure is there chromosomal structure is there red color structure is kind of structure and here ran gtp and ran gtp both are comes into play okay here ran graph 1 mediates a crucial uh, phenomenon mediates a crucial role in uh, switching ran gtp to ran gdp and ran gdp to ran gtp okay so first thing all of the uh, surface all of the structure of the chromosome is known as rcc that is regulator of chromosome condensation one so rcc stands for regulator of chromosome condensation one here regulator of chromosome condensation one from here ran gtp comes into play here tpx2 bind with import in alpha and import in beta where ran gtp separates import in beta and from tpx2 and those tpx2 ultimately leads to activation of aurora a kinase and aurora a ultimately activates nedd1 nedd1 stands for neural precursor cell expressed developmentally down regulated protein 1 so nedd1 stands for neural precursor cell expressed developmentally down regulated protein 1 so here aurora a ultimately activates NEDD1 and NEDD1 ultimately activates the gamma turk and gamma turk ultimately leads to the microtubule nucleation. So this is the main function. Another way RAN GTP converts into RAN GTP with the help of RAN gap 1. So with the help of RAN gap 1 RAN GTP converts into RAN GTP and thereby RAN GTP is actually separates import in B from NA import in alpha or import in A and it ultimately activates the NSL protein. NSL stands for NSL stands for non-specific lethal complexes. So here RAN GTP ultimately activates non-specific lethal complexes that is known as NSL and those NSL bind with the minus end of the particular microtubule and stabilizing the whole complexes. Next thing, if we observe closely the kinetochore region, this is the red region is the kinetochore region. Here, two of the proteins comes into play. First, RAN GTP. RAN GTP helps to activate transportins, and transportins is bind with ELYS and NUP proteins. NUP means NUP means nucleoproteins and ELYS means embryonic large molecule derived from yolk sac. So, embryonic large molecule derived from yolk sac. Okay. So, here transportins are bind with ELYS and NUP proteins, NUP107 to NUP160, NUP160. Here, RAN GTP, GTP actually separates transportins from ELYS and help ELYS and NUP NUP 107 to 160 and thereby activates the whole complexes and it finally attached with the gamma turk and gamma turk leads to the microtubule assembly and it actually binds with the plus end of microtubule with the kinetochore region. So TPX2 the major protein here TPX2, TPX2 stands for targeting protein for XKLP2, RAN stands for RAS related nuclear protein and CPC, CPC is a major protein. Here CPC stands for chromosome passenger complex. Next thing after completion of those complex, after completion of those uh, phenomenon, next thing is CPC activated now. It's chromosome that is chromosome passenger complex and chromosome passenger complex activates by the help of another protein known as haspin. Haspin particularly phosphorylates H3 in histone proteins and thereby activates the CPCs that means chromosome passenger complexes. So chromosome passenger complexes. Here chromosome passenger complexes phosphorylates aurora B kinase and aurora B kinase thereby stops the activity MCAK and STMN1 that is the stamine, statmin 1 and MCAK stands for mitotic centromere associated kinesins. So it activate, ultimately blocks those proteins 
and those proteins ultimately leads to the growth of microtubule. So, here Aurora B blocks the activity of NCAK and STMN1, STMN1 stands for strathmine 1 and ultimately those are activated by the phosphorylation MCAK and strathmine 1 and MCAK and strathmine 1 helps to regulate the microtubule growth and it ultimately leads to the microtubule growth. So, this is the whole function of RAN GTP, importing beta, TPX2, uh, NSL, gamma turk, MCAK, strathmine 1, all of these proteins are collaboratively work to help and stabilize the microtubule and thereby stabilizing the spindle apparatus, where NSL, uh, NSL stabilizing the minus ends of the microtubules and gamma turk stabilizing the plus ends of the particular microtubule. So, this is the total mechanism of spindle apparatus or organizing of the spindle apparatus. I think this video is really helpful for you to understand the whole process itself where chromosome uh, passenger complex that is CPC is, uh, plays a crucial role to activate the aurora uh, B kinase and aurora B kinase ultimately phosphor uh, leaves from kinetophore and it ultimately leads to the activation of MCAK that is mitrotic centromere associated kinase in proteins and strathmine 1 which ultimately re leads to the microtubule growth. I think this video is helpful for you for understand those whole complex itself. If you like that video please hit the like button, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.